17 hours stuck in a blizzard, minus 20 outside. Three brand new $7 million locomotives completely useless. And the only thing keeping passengers alive is a 25-year-old engine these new machines were supposed to replace. Rural Minnesota, December 20th, 2022. This is what an $850 million problem looks like. But we have to go back to December 2018. Amtrak writes a massive check to Siemens Mobility, $850 million for 125 brand new locomotives. The ALC-42 Charger. These were replacing the P-42 Genesis that had been hauling trains since 1996. First delivery arrives June 2021. By February 2022, Amtrak put them on the Empire Builder, running from Chicago to Seattle and Portland through some of the coldest territory in North America. Amtrak later admitted they never really tested the locomotives in real winter weather. No testing chamber could replicate what the Empire Builder actually goes through, so they simply put them on the route with paying passengers. February 8, 2022. Chicago Union Station. A big launch, cameras everywhere, everyone smiling. The positive train control system refuses to start. Engineers work on it for more than an hour. Nothing happens. Amtrak pulls a P-42 Genesis built in 1997 and places it on the front. The brand new locomotives leave Chicago, being led by a 25-year-old engine. Four days later, the eastbound train departs Seattle. The same positive train control problems persisted. Near Sultan, Washington, it collides with a pickup truck at a crossing. The train arrives more than six hours late. Two runs, two different problems. Amtrak keeps using them. We have to go back to December 2022. Weather forecasts show temperatures dropping to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit across North Dakota and Montana. Wind chill hits minus 46 degrees Fahrenheit. At those temperatures, exposed skin can get frostbite in under a minute. BNSF Railway starts implementing emergency procedures. On December 17th, Train 7 leaves Chicago with three chargers and one old P-42 trailing behind. By December 18th, it is two hours late. At least one charger broke down while crossing the Continental Divide. On December 19th, it reaches Sandpoint, Idaho, seven hours behind schedule. The dining car water lines froze. There was no kitchen, so Amtrak broke out emergency beef stew. Passengers in first class who paid more than $1,000 received the same stew as coach passengers. The train reached Spokane six hours late, with snow inside the locomotive cooling compartment. Siemens said that was not a problem, but the locomotives kept breaking down. December 20th, Train 8 departs Seattle heading east three chargers up front with one P-42 trailing. It gets through Washington and Idaho fine. It crosses into Montana and the temperature drops way below zero. Somewhere in rural Minnesota, all three chargers stop working at exactly the same time. The oil system froze solid and the locomotive just gave up. No head end power means no lights, no heat, no traction power means the wheels will not turn. Three locomotives, each worth $7 million, were just sitting there useless. The P-42 trailing behind keeps running fine. Passengers have heat and electricity. Without that 25-year-old locomotive, things could have turned really dangerous. BNSF dispatches a freight locomotive to rescue them. It takes hours. The train finally limps into Chicago on December 21st, 17 hours behind schedule. Passengers are furious. Amtrak blamed mechanical issues and bad weather. No real apology came with it. The next day, Amtrak cancels trains and suspends service west of Minneapolis for over a week. Christmas travel was destroyed. Here is what makes this worse. Siemens had already built more than 70 Charger locomotives for state-supported routes in California, Washington, Illinois, and other states before the ALC-42 long-distance version even entered service. Those SC-44 units had been running since 2017 without these kinds of breakdowns. The problem was, Siemens made modifications for the long-distance version, larger fuel tanks, more powerful head-end power generators, and an extended nose section. And apparently, those modifications created problems nobody caught in testing. So what actually failed? The transformer oil piping could not handle extreme cold, and the oil became too thick to flow. Siemens had to redesign the entire system. 
The dynamic brake filters let in light, dry snow, causing electrical faults and shutdowns. A Federal Railroad Administration spokesperson said Siemens did not expect this kind of Midwest snow, which is remarkable when you are building locomotives for Midwest winter routes. The positive train control system could not reliably connect with freight railroad systems. Diesel exhaust fluid freezes quickly, and when that system stops working, the whole engine can shut down. Emergency cutoff switches on the exterior were accidentally triggered by snow and ice. The train would just stop without warning. Engineers reported misaligned lights, number board lights shining on control screens and making them unreadable at night, and frozen toilets because the bathroom was not heated. One engineer said that when they work properly, they are nice to operate. He really emphasized the word when. Some of these problems are baffling. Cutoff switches triggered by weather should not have passed design review. The toilet froze because there was no heat in the bathroom. The exhaust fluid system was not protected against cold, even though these units were built for some of the coldest routes in America. Contemporary reports say Amtrak sent Siemens at least 70 design changes over the following year. That is not normal teething problems. That is a fundamental mismatch between design and operating conditions. Amtrak basically admitted they used real passengers to shake the problems out. They did it with paying passengers, rather than during isolated testing. The Charger had gone through extensive testing before passengers boarded. In June 2016, there was testing at Pueblo, Colorado. In September 2016, there were high-speed runs on the Northeast Corridor hitting 135 miles per hour. In February 2017, there was testing in Washington and Oregon. But none of those tests involved sustained operation in minus 20 to minus 30 degrees with blowing snow over days. Amtrak admitted there is no testing chamber that replicates what the Empire Builder experiences. So they used passenger service as the test. People bought tickets, and locomotives failed repeatedly. Siemens is German, and Germany gets winter. But the upper Midwest gets sustained sub-zero temperatures for weeks with dry, powdery snow everywhere and wind chill that is dangerous for outdoor work. The Federal Railroad Administration spokesperson was blunt. Siemens did not anticipate the type of snow they would encounter. We have to go back to February 2024, two years after that disastrous debut. Amtrak says the locomotives are finally working right, four times fewer failures that winter, better reliability than the P-42s they are replacing. 52 were delivered, 46 are in service. But the exhaust fluid still causes problems. Cutoff switches still get triggered. Toilets still freeze. The locomotives run on nine long-distance routes now. Amtrak is taking all 125. These are supposed to run for 30 to 40 years. Whether they will ever fully earn that trust is still up in the air. The P-42 came from the 90s, and it just kept going. On December 20th, 2022, one of those old locomotives kept passengers safe, while three brand new $7 million machines sat frozen in Ministia. Some engineers still say they would rather have the old ones. Claude is AI and can make mistakes. Please double-check responses.